And to tell you how I'm going to help the um, spasticity of the hand, we need to do a little bit of review of the peripheral nervous system. So what we're seeing here is the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve here, as you can see, it enters into the fingers. But look at this little tiny branch here. This is called a deep branch. This tiny branch here actually enters the hypothenar and traverses the entire hand and actually innervates the adductor pollicis, the muscle that does this to the thumb. So it is this deep motor branch that's responsible for these movements and these fine motor opposition movements. So how can we affect that? This is the neural anatomy here. You can see this is the ulnar nerve over here. Okay, and, and um, you'll see that there's a label here, the deep motor branch. So the ulnar nerve continues in the finger, but there's that deep motor branch that then kicks across and innervates all the rest of the fingers. So if we can, if we stimulate this nerve, ulnar nerve, and if apply electricity, electricity is going to go into the sensory component, but it's also going to go into the motor component. And it, so by stimulating ulnar nerve anywhere um, proximal to this branch, it could be it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, and you apply electricity, we'll be able to send electricity into this branch. If we put needles, let's say in like. Um, Sanjia 2, for example, in the, in the web space here, that's only gonna affect the sensorial brain. It's not gonna go back up to affect this motor branch. So, so as long as you understand the relationship of how these nerves branch, you'll know, know where you can needle and stimulate uh, and get, get relevant uh, activation. So this video here shows you an example of the ulnar nerve stimulation. And why I, why I want you to see is the opposition of the hand that's happening over here. So you see how the thumb is moving towards the thenar? The thumb is moving to with the, uh, um, the pinky or the thenar is moving to the hyperthenar. This is how you, one of the techniques I used with stroke patients, MS patients to improve fine motor movement. And as you know, in scalp acupuncture, there are also different areas that are for praxis areas that are supposed to be for fine motor movement. But I have found that even just this peripheral technique alone, in, which I'm going to show you in this MS patient, it was able to make a huge difference in their, in their uh, fine motor activity.